Hey there, folks. Chris Rieger here from Heyo, and it is time to get started. We just crossed by my clock here, the top of the hour, and you guys are in the right place for today's exclusive webinar called How to Double Your Email List Using Social Contests, and I am really, really excited to be joining you guys today. Uh, this is some really good content. We're going to share um, some great information with you. We're going to share some great case studies, and I think most importantly, share a couple of strategies with you that are super, super effective for building your email list um, through social media. And so I think you guys are in the right spot and I, I really hope you're gonna love it. And I am joined uh, by my good friend, Wes Schaefer, and I'm gonna go ahead and unmute Wes so he can say hello. So uh, here is Wes Schaefer, also known as the sales whisperer. Wes, you there? Hey, you said I wouldn't have to say anything. <laughs> Oh, I said you're going to have to Come talk. On. You're giving the webinar, Wes. <laughs> oh, I, I just invited everyone. You're supposed to make me look good. <laughs> Wes, how are you feeling today? That's a tall order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know I was going to have to make you look good. Come on. Uh, all right, at least you make us successful, all right? All right, I'll see what I can do. So, Wes, thank you so much all for right. joining, man. It's great to have you, uh, have you on. I've been really looking forward to this. Hey, thanks for offering to do it. Absolutely. So I've got to ask Wes right as we get started. Um, you know why? Uh, why invite your audience? You know we talked. Uh, you know we met. Let's see, last year, the end of last year, right at Entrepalooza, um, yeah, which was yeah in October, which was uh, which was a great event in beautiful Santa Barbara, and uh, you know really you know really got to know each other there. Enjoyed meeting you, learning about all the great stuff you're doing. You know why did you decide to go ahead and share this topic in particular with your audience? Um, well, I mean, meeting you helps, you know, I, everybody that knows me knows that I don't just push something just because, uh, so, and then seeing the, the changes as well at Heyo, I mean, y'all getting bought, that was really interesting. It uh, shows uh, value as well that others besides me value what you're up to. Uh, but I've always had a love hate relationship with social media. Uh, I think a lot of people are sucked in uh, and you know, I always tell people if and I put that in the email I sent out last week if you're not paying for a service then you are the product All right. so our eyeballs and clicks on Facebook and Twitter and these other platforms um, are is that information is being stored and gathered um, and used to market to us uh, by others right so, right you know, why not learn? I mean, we're going to be on these platforms, okay? And so why not uh, use our time there? I mean, have fun, right? Share pictures of the kids and grandkids and your, your vacations, but also uh, use it to your advantage to grow your business. Uh, so I'm always looking for, you know, ways to grow. And uh, I, liked, I liked what you're doing over there. I like the title of this. And, um, and I'm not a master at leveraging social media. The way I need to, so I mean, I'm going to be taking notes as well. Awesome, awesome, great, great. Well, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping here, right up front, as we get started, everyone. So, first of all, how to communicate with Wes and me um, in the GoToWebinar uh, panel that you've got open. You should see a little questions box, just like this. And throughout the webinar, if you've got questions, feel free to pop them in. If you've got a comment, if you just want to give a shout out and say hello, uh, please do it. We want to make this as interactive as we can. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, during the webinar, there are going to be some times I ask you guys for some input as well. So make sure you, uh, you do that. And here's the first, here's, uh, here's test uh, question number one. Can everyone hear me and see my screen clearly? Can you see my slides? Um, if so, go ahead and comment yes in the GoToWebinar questions. Okay, Luke says yes. Oh, by the way, Luke says he's in Houston. Luke, welcome. Can everybody else hear yeah, me clearly? I was just there two weekends ago. No kidding. Okay, looks like yeah. we're looks like we're in good shape, Wes. Okay, great. And so, uh, you know, one other thing, folks, as we get started, um, you know, this is a great time to go ahead and just kind of take a deep breath, focus. You know, we all have a lot of pressures on our time. Uh, we all have a lot of competing priorities. You know, go ahead and close out of your email, close out of your other tabs. Um, shut the door to your office if you have that luxury. Uh, tell your colleagues or your family that you need a little quiet time. This is your time to invest in yourself, right? Like, 
uh, like we heard um, earlier from Jim, you know, he says, I really like to stay on top of like what current trends and what's happening. You know, we get so caught up in the day-to-day work that we do. It's really good to kind of step back and think about the big picture. So make sure you do that. Um, So hopefully you guys are all with me watching my screen because here we go. So first of all, I just want to introduce myself. Um, My name is Chris. I run marketing here at Heyo Marketing Strategy. And Heyo is a great platform for running campaigns and social contests that uh, build your email list, help you get more leads, and also drive engagement through social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and others. And we really, really love small business if it wasn't apparent already by the big heart um, on the screen. <laughs> we really love small businesses. And you know what? We've, uh, we've had the opportunity to be featured in some great, um, some great outlets uh, like, like some of the ones listed here. But um, mostly, I'm just excited to be able to spend this time with you guys today and, and share some content that I think is, uh, is, is really valuable and hopefully going to be really, really helpful for you guys. All right, cool. So, um, and you know, Wes, I'm assuming everybody already knows you, but do you want to sit, take a moment and, and uh, say something about yourself as well? Oh, man. Uh, well, I've owned the Sales Whisper now. It's my 10-year anniversary in September. No kid. This um, this September? 10 years? Old, old school, coming up on 10 years. Love it. Love it. Uh, yep. You know, and I started laying the groundwork in early 06, but I bought the domain name September 1st, 2006. So, um, great. thanks to GoDaddy, I will always know my anniversary. Um, so, you know, started in just pure sales training. I don't think uh, Facebook was even around then. Um, and really was doing very little on social media, although I think I was on MySpace. I have to go back and look. Um, and I was an early adopter of LinkedIn, so I've, I've used these tools for quite some time. But uh, like I said, my, my background and foundation is on sales training and copywriting and a lot with automation uh, tools like Infusionsoft and HubSpot and Entreport. Great tools. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So I'm, you know, and they all have a social media component, um, but um, you know, like Jim and the others, I, just, I like to stay uh, ahead of the game if I can. So um, that's why I'm here. Awesome, awesome. Well, here's the agenda we've got happening for today, folks. My goal is here in the next 35 to 40 minutes uh, to teach you first of all how a marketing manager with no technical skills launched a campaign that converted at 30%. For those of you wondering, what does converted mean? Don't worry, I'll break it down for you. We'll also talk through the six crucial pieces of every social contest that uh, that you really need to succeed. These are the kind of the six things that we've identified after seeing thousands of social contests run here at Heyo um, that really need to be there to make sure that um, you know, you're putting your best foot forward for your campaign so that it's really, really successful. I'll also share with you a, a whole bunch of case studies. We've got five specific ones that have captured together over 7,000 new email leads for the businesses that ran them. I'll also share with you again, break down how you can copy those um, those campaigns and, and how you can copy uh, is kind of their best practices. Plus, like we talked about earlier, we'll make sure we save some time for live Q&A. And I'll also show you, I've got kind of a little goodie here. This is one of the most highly converting campaigns we've ever seen here at Heyo. Um, and we actually were able to talk to the business a little bit. So we've got some details I can share with you on that. And so I'm really, really excited. You will not want uh, to miss that. But for now, let's dive right in and let's talk about part one of our agenda today. How a marketing manager with no technical skills launched a campaign that converted at 30%. So first off, I'd like you guys to meet Amy. Um, So Mixed Bag Designs is the business that Amy works on. And uh, it's it's an e-commerce business primarily sells online and basically sells handbags, uh, purses, shoulder bags, anything you can carry something in, that, that is what they specialize in. It is a consumer product company. Um, and their goal was to, you know, they had this great social following. Their goal was to um, really use that following, try to work with them and get them to opt in and become a lead, give them their email address um, so that they could, uh, they could correspond and, and have um, their email li- list as a really strong asset and kind of build, build that up. So here's Amy and here's the campaign that she ran. And this is the one we're going to break down step by step. But um, here, here it is. It was a simple giveaway. So I'll let you kind of digest this for a moment. 
Amy's campaign had almost 1,800 impressions, meaning se- literally, literally 1,799 people actually saw this campaign landing page. And of those 1,799 people, 582 of them actually entered their email address for a conversion rate of 30%. So when I say conversion rate, what we hold ourselves to here at Heyo is how many people who actually looked at this campaign actually opted in and entered their email address. So 582 um, over 1799, that is the 30%. So Wes, let me, let me ask you a question right now. What do you think of this conversion rate? What do I think? Um, Would, um, let me, let me ask a different question. Would you like to have a 30% opt-in rate on, on something, a landing page or sure. something else that you're running? It's pretty solid. Yeah, especially right? when you, especially when you look at click through rates on like a PPC campaign, uh, people are sometimes happy with one to two or three percent. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. There you go. Cool. So that's so that's uh, that's Amy. Let me let me share one other case study with you guys. So this is Milena Rigas. Okay, and some of you might be like Milena. So she doesn't run her um, her own uh, business selling products. She runs a consulting business, working with other businesses to help them um, market their business. And this is a campaign she ran for one of her clients called Squaw Valley Ski Resort. And it was a great campaign, also a giveaway. And she says, when we launched Squaw Valley's campaign with Heyo, it converted over 30% with no ad spend. The mobile experience was spectacular as well. This was, you know, obviously even larger, right? 17,000 impressions, 4,500 emails captured for about the same conversion rate of about 30%, but also very successful. Here's uh, one last one for you right now I'll share. So this is Paul Abdo. Now, some of you guys listening might be like Paul. Paul is the marketing manager. He's actually the marketing department, right? He's the entire (laughs) marketing department for a a small uh, boutique hotel called Nicolette Island Inn. And they ran this uh, social contest. It was also a giveaway. It was extremely successful. 1,242 impressions, 716 emails captured for a 60% conversion rate. Um, Now, uh, I'm going to ask, I I like putting Wes on the spot. Wes, I like putting you on the spot. So I'm going to put you on the spot one more time. So when (laughs) when you look at this campaign here that Paul ran, what's one of the reasons you think uh, it was it was successful. Is there anything that's different about this one than the others? No right answer here. I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. Oh man, I have no idea. Other than um, maybe he picked a holiday to run the promotion, and he probably targeted men who were forgetful and late ordering gifts. Are you speaking from experience, Wes? No. <laughs> no. No, you nailed it, man. You nailed it. You know, uh, this is the first best practice I'll share here, everyone. And that is that what Paul hit on, and you'll notice that, hey, a 30% conversion rate is awesome. And we see these social giveaways typically convert at around 20% and higher, 20% and higher. And the nice thing is, is the typical uh, length of time you run one of these giveaways is probably just one to two weeks. So where you might have an evergreen landing page set up that just says, hey, join my email list or maybe a pop-up set up on your blog, and you're going to get, you know, like some of the numbers Wes mentioned earlier, you're going to get one, two, maybe four or 5% of people who see that to actually opt in. And over time, those really add up. You know, the goal of running a, a giveaway like this or a social contest is to have a real event that is super engaging and, uh, and gets lots of people to opt in um, over a very short period of time. Okay. So you really nailed it, Wes. You know, we, we think one of the main reasons this campaign was so successful is that it was timely. It was current. It timed uh, the campaign along with a big event, in this case, the holiday of Valentine's Day here in the US, right? That people were already thinking about. And yes, there were lots of guys probably trying to figure out, <laughs> um, probably trying to figure out what to get for their significant other, uh, their wife, their girlfriend, et cetera. Uh, but but regardless, it was already on people's minds. So instead of just giving away a free night stay at the hotel, they they positioned it as a little Valentine's Day package, right? And it was extremely successful. So good job, Wes. You're a smart guy. Now you like that, huh? <laughs> so uh, here's just I, I lied. There's one more. Um, so this is uh, Gorin Brothers, and Gorin Brothers is a company that make custom makes hats. And uh, also a very successful campaign. One of the higher conversion rates I've ever seen on a social contest here of of almost 80%. 
But, um, you know, again, this was really similar. People had the chance to opt in with their email address uh, to win a prize. Now, if you take a look at this prize, uh, you'll notice that uh, we've got another best practice here I'll share with you, which is that when you're thinking about the incentive you give away to make sure that there's, or at least strive for some level of exclusivity, right? And uh, exclusivity doesn't mean expensive. It doesn't have to be an all expenses paid vacation. Although if you've got the resources to do that, then fantastic. People will get really excited about that. Um, but in this case, Goren Brothers was just giving away a uh, one of the hats that they make. But they actually also, along with the prize, they actually named a hat from their upcoming lineup of new hats after the winner. So this hat belongs to you. Get a hat named after you. That was the prize. So it didn't cost them anything, right? Um, it was just part of how they do business. And it was really it got people really, really excited. And so they were excited to have a hat named after them. So exclusivity along with timeliness is another thing that can make these contests very, very successful. Now, I've shared with you mostly giveaways here, but there are lots of other types of campaigns that you can run to both build your email list and get your audience really, really engaged. And, and one of them is a photo contest. You know, this is the age of the selfie. People love taking pictures of themselves, of each other, of their food, you know, what have you. And what we found is that these types of campaigns that get people snapping photos or shooting a little bit of video and entering it themselves, they tend to get people really excited. And so what this is, is a photo contest where people can submit a picture, okay? In this case, this is a little Oktoberfest contest where people could submit their favorite, uh, a picture of their favorite beer. And, and then they can then get their friends and family and, and social followers to then vote on that contest and the highest vote getter wins. And, we're, and we see these contests being really, really popular right now. Another type of contest is the refer a friend contest. So this is, this is very, very um, uh, popular as well in getting traffic driven back to the contest page. So basically, uh, like the giveaway, you can opt in by just entering your email address. However, once you enter, um, you're given a unique link so that you can go then share that with your own audience, with your own friends and followers on social or, or, or elsewhere. And the more people that you get to enter, the more points you get. And the winner is the entrant who actually gets the most points, gets the most people to enter the contest. So this is another type of contest that uh, that can be run. All right, so now let's dive right in and talk about the six critical pieces that every social contest needs to succeed. So hopefully you guys are watching my screen. Uh, we are going to, uh, I'll try to breeze through these relatively quickly. Um, but we find these to be the most important factors as you're building out your campaign landing page, uh, at least based on our experience here at Heyo. So the first one is a strong incentive. Um, and, and you'll notice my direction here on this slide, right? Not to give away something like an iPad or an Amazon gift card or something like that. Um, and, and the reason is, um, <clears throat> well, let me ask you guys. Let me, let me, let me put it to everybody who's, who's uh, on the webinar right now. Tell me in the GoToWebinar questions, why would you not want to give away something like an Amazon gift card or an iPad that everyone would want? Why might that be a bad idea? What do you guys think? And Wes, while I give them a moment to answer, do you have any thoughts here? Why do you think it might not be the best idea to give away something like an iPad or an Amazon gift card? Well, it could be a few things. One is margin. You actually have to go buy those. Uh, and whatever they cost is what it's going to cost you versus if you give away some of your own stuff. That's very true. Uh, you know, the actual margins... You know the, the true cost could be less, um, but I think people sometimes the Amazon gift card if it's not big enough, they're like, yeah, whatever. But it's also not personalized, and I feel like the iPad is people don't believe it. Uh, hmm. Interesting. You know, like yeah, everybody says, you know, how many times have I put my business card in a bowl at a at a trade show and never won? But I sure right. got a lot of uh, emails and solicitations from them. Yeah, you sort of assume. Somebody somewhere got that iPad, right? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. So those are no, those are all really nah, good. I mean, those are really good points. So so Netra says it's not true to your brand. Kathy says, well, it drives business elsewhere. Kind of the same point you were making, right? You got to go buy this product from somebody else, from Apple, from Amazon, whatever. Um, and uh, and Jim says, hey, well, hey, it's like your slide says, you know, there's nothing really emotionally connecting you to your business. Yeah, I think the 
look, everything you guys are saying is exactly right. Something else I'll share is that what we find happens for our customers when they give away something that I'll call pretty generic, right, is that lots of people would want that thing, right? I mean, you could get a lot of email leads by giving away an iPad, right? Anybody would want an iPad. My 11-year-old son would love an iPad of his own. My 11-year-old son would be a horrible lead for your business. Trust me, he has no money. Um, and so, and he can't even drive yet, right? So um, he can't get anywhere. So uh, yeah, I mean, picking something that is much more aligned to your brand, as Jim and as Netra suggested, right, um, is is much more important. So in this case, you know, it's pretty simple, right? Mixed bag designs sells handbags. They picked a, a handbag from their new spring line uh, lineup of handbags, and that's what they gave away as their prize. Giving away your own product um, can can definitely work, but that's that's not the only answer, right? Uh, you want to make sure that the prize you give away is really compelling and is going to ultimately be something that um, aligns well with your business so that the people who would want that prize would be a good lead for your business. I personally would rather have, you know, let's say, 30 or 50 really relevant new leads than 500 uh, new email addresses that at the end of the day just aren't that really relevant to my business. So that's number one. Number two is to create urgency. You know, uh, it seems like to me, Wes, uh, consumer attention spans are getting shorter by the minute. You know, when I when I go to these conferences like you attend many of, right, um, the direction I'm always hearing is you got to be really crisp. You got to cut through the noise. Um, you know, your call to action has got to be short and really clear and all that's really good advice. And so one of the things that we, we've seen here at Heyo is that you really got to create a sense of urgency to get people really excited about your campaign, right? And so what we do is we have a very simple contest countdown clock that you can configure that, you know, just hits people as soon as they see it, um, make sure that that uh, it drives some action. So we recommend setting this for a simple giveaway uh, in the time frame of seven to 10 days. Um, you know, just to get people compelled to action, because uh, otherwise, you know, social media is distracting. Uh, there are baby pictures, uh, updates from friends, uh, videos of baby hedgehogs, whatever. Uh, it's all out there to distract us and, and kind of, you know, 30 minutes to an hour later, we wonder what the heck we're doing. It, I know it's happened to all of us, not just me. I know it's happened to you, Wes, I'm sure. Those baby hedgehogs get, get you every time. Okay, so uh, step number three. Critical component number three. Now, this seems like incredible common sense, but you'd be surprised. Make it really, really easy to enter your campaign. And this is great advice for any landing page, right? Do not be vague. Tell your fans exactly how they can win the prize, exactly how they should sign up, okay? And make it really, really clear. You'll notice that the button, the orange button here for people to enter is no accident, right? The orange-red color spectrum to the human brain is the alert color spectrum. It's why stop signs are red, so I stop lights are red, okay? So that color spectrum is the alert color. It's the reason that every app you use online has big orange buttons everywhere, um, you know, for the call to action. So we highly recommend a nice bright um, color on the button. Now, as just a quick pro tip here, um, we recommend you you easily integrate this sign up form, this entry form, to your email marketing platform, to your email marketing platform, uh, to make sure that. Uh, you can set up an autoresponder. You can immediately engage with those folks as they're entering the contest. Like Wes said, you know, so many times we enter something, we might be at a conference and drop our business card in the fishbowl or whatever, and we're just not really sure if anything happens from that. So following up with people who enter these types of campaigns is definitely a best practice. Uh, it's great social proof, and it, it really helps uh, engage them to your brand a little bit more. So I'm curious to hear from you guys. Um, if you could tell us in the GoToWebinar questions, what email marketing platform are you guys using right now? Do you use a kind of a simple email marketing tool like MailChimp or iContact or Mad Mimi or AWeber? Do you use a platform like Infusionsoft or HubSpot or Entreport? Um, let us know in the GoToWebinar questions what type of email marketing platform you guys use right now for your business. Okay, cool. I see Infusionsoft, Constant Contact. All right, I'll keep rolling, but um, let us know. I'd love to. Um, I'd love to kind of learn from you guys what types of uh, tools you're using. Okay, number four. Let them market for you. You want to let your fans 
become a marketing force for your business. So one of the most powerful things about running a social contest is that social media is an inherently social platform, right? It, it's a place where we can share um, with our family, our friends, our fans, our followers, uh, forgive the alliteration. And, uh, you know, this is a really, really easy way to do this is to make sure that you've got some very simple sharing features baked right into the contest page. Let your fans make it really easy for those who enter this contest to share it, to tweet about it, and get their fans and followers engaged as well. We'll touch back on this in just a few minutes. All right, step number five, do not assume that viewers will mentally connect your campaign to your brand. Okay, include your logo and we recommend right in the upper left hand corner. Okay, let them know exactly who your brand is so that they will really connect. All right, so uh, a question for all of you guys. Um, what do you think the last critical component is? Remember I said there were six and I've shared five. What is number six? What do you think number six is? And for a little bit of a hint, here are some stats and I won't even say anything. I'm just gonna let you guys take a look at my slide. What do you think number six is? All right, Wes, I'll put you back on the spot. What do you think critical component number six is for running a social campaign? Make it mobile friendly. Wow, I could not have said it better myself. So first of all, let me just let, let me just highlight. Yeah, I, yes, that is Wes is exactly right. Make make it mobile friendly. So here's the why, right? So here's some stats that are uh, I think really interesting. So first of all, fifty two percent of all active Facebook users are only using Facebook from their phone, meaning they never even log into Facebook on their you know laptop or their desktop computer. 52%, more than half now. And by the way, all these numbers came right from Facebook's Q4 earnings report. This is directly from Facebook. There are 1.6 billion, with billion with a B, Facebook users on mobile and 400 million Instagram users, Instagram being essentially a mobile platform, right? And the average Facebook user uses Facebook 40 minutes per day here in the US. That's a lot of time. That is a lot of time. So Wes is exactly right. Um, make it mobile friendly. That is absolutely a must. If you don't publish um, your campaign, you don't promote it using a smart URL, um, then you're cutting your likelihood of success in half. And a smart URL, we, we, have, we use them. They're baked right into Heyo. But basically what that does is it makes sure it shares the right version of the campaign um, with, your, with your fans, with consumers, based on what device they're on. So here's a little stat from us at Heyo. What we've seen, uh, we looked at all the campaigns that were run on Heyo in 2015, last year. And on average, 60% of new leads are coming from mobile and tablet. So these are like, we looked at all the campaigns run by our customers. And we looked at who was entering those campaigns and what type of device they were entering from. And 60% of them were doing it from mobile and tablet, only 40%. We're doing it from a computer, from a laptop or a desktop computer. Um, so, you know, mobile is absolutely critical in 2016. It is absolutely critical. Make sure that your campaign is absolutely mobile friendly. Wes, any other thoughts here from you on mobile? You know, um, I'm curious to hear maybe your experience. You know, you're a really savvy guy. You're doing a lot of marketing, both of your own brand and, and working with other companies as well. Um, any Any further thoughts about kind of the, the critical nature of mobile in 2016? Um, I, I would tell everybody, and I've always said this in marketing in, in general, is that you are not your customer. So even if you spend more time yourself on your desktop, like I, I don't travel that much anymore, uh, so I spend a lot of time accessing all these platforms on my desktop. Um, but I, I do have these apps on my phone. I do use them when I'm gone. <clears throat> so even if you're thinking, um, you know, that's not my experience, right? I, I access more from my laptop, my desktop. You just need to realize that these are actual numbers. Uh, they're not made up. Uh, numbers don't lie. And so even if, if you don't fall into this category, realize that 
your prospects probably do. Uh, so make sure you have a way to test things. Um, to to I always say you have to get in real estate. Uh, you build on a hill with a view, you build next to water, you build in the way of progress. So here we are in the way of progress, right? So meaning that everyone is going to mobile. Uh, mobile surpassed desktop searches last year. Uh, and so we'll that's never right. look back, right? Mobile is, is, that's why Google took away the right-hand uh, ads uh, last month because they don't show up on mobile anyway and Google knows that's where things are going. So just Accept the fact that mobile is here to stay. It's accelerating its usage, and so build in the way of progress. Right? Make sure whatever you're doing is accessible and easy to to use on a mobile device. I really like that real estate analogy, Wes. I'm going to steal that if you don't mind. Oh, fine. <laughs> no, I like that. Build in the way of progress. I mean, you're exactly right. You know. Um, you know, when we, we sometimes hear these stats and maybe judge because we do things a little differently, but the reality is numbers don't lie. As I always say, uh, when you look at the data, you're exactly right. Mobile is, is here to stay. And at this point has surpassed mobile traffic online has surpassed computer traffic, um, online. You know, when you look at any, any period, um, here over the about the last year, basically, um, that's where we've been. So, mobile absolutely critical. Not, I think we've I think we've beaten that horse enough. Um, so, here's my question for you guys, uh, and you know, totally, we can we can do this either way. Would you like to see how you can do this too? I'm prepared if you'd like. I can just do a real quick demo of how to build uh, one of these campaigns very simply. If so, comment yes in the GoToWebinar questions. If not, just say skip. If you'd rather me kind of skip it and move on, we can uh, we can just keep going. Uh, so Jim says he'd love to see it. All right, well, all right, Wes. What do you what do you think? Should we? Uh, looks like we've got some yeses. Should we should we go ahead and do a quick demo, or do you want do you want to just move on? I'll let you make the call. Bring it on. All right, all right. Let's do it. Let's do it. So first of all, I'll just share with you. You know, you guys. There are there. Are, several great platforms out there that you can use to run a social contest to put one together. Uh, this is what we do at Heyo. So I'm going to use our platform because of course I'm most comfortable with it. Um, and I'll show you how easy it is to do. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and just log right into Heyo. And uh, first thing, first thing first, I'm going to go ahead and click um, create a campaign. I'm going to name my campaign. We're going to call it spring. And it's not technically spring yet, but I think we're like a week away, right? Boom. Uh, yeah, the 21st. There you go, the 21st. So there are a few things that you can do. You can, you'll see here uh, right down the middle of the screen in Heyo. The very top of the list is run a social contest. That's what we're talking about today. So that's where we're going to, where we're going to go. I, I clicked on that and you'll see some options opened up here right on the right hand side. A few different campaigns that you can run. These are all templates that are turnkey. They're really easy to just pick and roll with. I'm going to go ahead and click the sweepstakes template. So this sweepstakes or giveaway, this format might look a little familiar, right, from some of the case studies I've just shown. Uh, this sweepstakes or giveaway campaign is just the most kind of bread and butter social contest that you can run. It's very simple. Consumers get it right away. They can simply enter their email address for a chance to win a great prize. I'm going to click save and start editing. Now, one of the folks that, uh, that we've got... Um, let's see, one of the folks that we've got here on the, um, there we go on the webinar I noticed was group training body express. I was going to go, I'm going to go ahead and pick their business. We're going to put together a social contest for body express. So there they are. They're on Facebook, got a nice looking website, basically a group training and fitness business. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So a couple of different things. First of all, first thing we've got to do is we want to put our logo in the top left-hand corner. And within Heyo, you'll notice that as I mouse over kind of the canvas of the campaign, right, um, I get a little highlight and I can click on each element and I can update it. So I'm going to move um, relatively quickly here. Um, so, and, and by the way, folks, I'm recording this, so don't stress out if you miss something. Um, I'll make sure I send the recording out to everybody who's on the webinar. 
Um, so you guys uh, have this and you can refer back to it anytime. So I'm gonna, I went ahead and I clicked the logo here at the top left. I'm gonna go back to the Group Training Body Express website, right click, copy the image address of their logo. Over here on the right hand side in Heyo is where I make my edits. I'm just gonna paste that in, boom, there's the logo. Save changes. Now, the hero image is also um, really, really important. It's kind of the first thing that people see when they view the page. So let's go ahead and, and, and assume we're going to give away like some cool fitness products or maybe a, maybe a free class um, at this business, right? So um, let's go ahead and go to their Facebook page, which looks pretty cool. All right, look at this. Let's look at photos. We'll just grab, let's grab this one. So same thing, I'm gonna right click it, copy the image address. And obviously this is just illustrative. Paste that in right there save changes. So really with this hero image, folks, you want to highlight your prize, make it really clear, and ideally kind of put a little bit of a call to action right in the image because it's the first thing people are going to see when they hit this page. Something that says, you know, enter your email to win or, you know, um, win a free fitness package or whatever it is that you're giving away for your prize or incentive. Now, remember, we talked about that contest countdown to create some urgency. You'll notice that we automatically set this to 10 days. I like that time frame for a giveaway. Like I said before, about seven to 10 days, I think is perfect. So I'm going to leave that alone. But if I wanted to change that, again, over here on the right-hand side, I've got a little calendar. I can change the date. I can change the time. So um, you'll notice here, if I click on the email opt-in form, I've got um, a few different email marketing platforms that I can sync to, pretty much all the major ones, right? So I think, Wes, I think uh, you use at least one of these platforms, right? Uh, I do. There you go. So, uh, and most folks, I think at this point, we've got most folks covered, but we're adding more all the time. For instance, we've got uh, a Git response integration rolling out next week. So um, if you don't have one of these platforms that you can sync to, no problem. You just select downloadable CSV file and you can go right to building out your form. So you can add fields if you need to. You can even add a little uh, checkbox if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and have first name there. I can move these around. I want first name to be above email address. All right, cool. And there you go. Uh, my recommendation here would be with this uh, entry form to keep it short and sweet. You know, a law of the internet is that every additional piece of information you ask for will decrease your entry rate, will decrease your conversion rate. So, you know, I, I see, I sometimes see a form online uh, when I'm trying to check out and it's like, you know, enter your first name, your last name, your phone number, your email address, your street address, your bank account number, your social security number, name all of your children. And, you know, it gets a little out of hand, right? Like nobody wants to fill out that much information, share that much personal information. So, you know, just asking for an email address or a name and an email address, I think is best. If you need to ask for a little bit more information that's critical to your business, then go for it. But just keep in mind that the less you ask for, the better, you know, the higher your conversion rate is going to be. And then here is that most important part, right? This, this social sharing options right down here at the bottom left. So I'm going to explain here in a moment why that's so important. But basically, I, I'm going to click this and I have the option to um, put in my own information here. I can put in my Facebook page URL so folks can like my Facebook page. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. There's Body Express. Boom. I'm just going to grab that URL. I'm going to paste it in here. And now if I leave this little field blank, the URL to share, Heyo is going to go ahead and default to your contest page. So when someone clicks to share on Facebook or to tweet on Twitter, then um, you're going to be sharing and tweeting about this page. I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank. But I want to update the share tweet text and say, All right, I just entered to win a free fitness package worth $199. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and click Save Changes. Finally, this little text area right below the hero image is a great place to either put some marketing copy or put in your rules. If you've got 
special rules or terms for the campaign. Um, if you want to, you know, put something in about who can enter or how people have to pick up the prize, this is exactly where that should go. And you can, you know, change this font. Um, you can update the, you know, change the font size, the font type. Um, it's really, really easy to do. I can change the justification. I've got a full text editor here and that's really, really simple. So, all right, boom, I'm going to click save changes. And then I'm going to click save and preview down here on the bottom right. All right, now Wes, I mean, look, this, this, that was just like a quick little demo, right? But that was not that hard. That was not that hard. That was not that you know, hard. I had a, I had a question for you though. Please, With the way please. that, that pages don't really get uh, a wide distribution anymore. I mean, Facebook's a big pay to play. Um, how much do you get into like Facebook ads or how much do people need to be paying to promote these promotions? Great question. It's a great question. So promotion is obviously really important. Um, and my, what I normally tell our clients is they want to start by leveraging you know, every organic channel that they have available to them. So if they have a nice fan base on Facebook or followers on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever platform, social platform that they have, they should absolutely be just doing some organic some, you know, posts on those platforms that direct folks right to the contest page. Um, same thing with your website. If you've got good website traffic or you know, some followers for your blog, um, you, you, there's no reason you shouldn't be promoting it through your website or blog as well. I would say the same thing about email, believe it or not, right? Um, you've already got the email address of those folks that are on your email list, but they're going to enter and they're going to share it and you don't have the email address of a lot of their friends and fans. So, so I highly recommend first leveraging every organic channel you've got, right? I mean, they're free um, and that's just smart business. Um, we do have any clients, Wes, that will choose to do a little bit of paid advertising on these as well. Facebook ads does seem to be one of the more popular choices, mostly because Facebook's ad platform actually has some pretty powerful uh, targeting criteria, right? If you're a local business, for instance, um, you can do geographic targeting. If you're trying to reach a particular um, demographic uh, of people, so, um, you know, again, location or gender or age or family status or, or education level, um, like you said before, Wes, we're the product on Facebook, right? Like people, uh, our Facebook has a lot of information about its users. Um, and while that's a little scary to think about, it's also pretty great if you're a business and you're looking to segment and reach folks with a Facebook ad. So we see those working best when they're very well targeted. If you try to like, you know, you know, kind of just sort of, you know, spray and pray as they say, uh, you know, and, and, and put together an ad and just kind of shoot it out to everyone, then it's usually not going to perform as well. Um, I'll, something I like to say is that, you know, the only thing you're going to get from a massive audience is massive cost. You know, you want to really try to target down to the specific group of people that you're trying to communicate with. And we see Facebook ads working pretty well when that happens. Does that answer your question? Sure. Okay, great. So here's that, uh, you know, we talked about how important mobile is. This is the preview of the campaign right before it goes live. Um, here's this all important button right here, Wes that uh, you know this campaign is already mobile responsive. I can click that preview button here to see it. Um, it's gonna look great on mobile. And what happens is once I decide I'm ready to publish this, I'm gonna go ahead and publish this to just a little like test page that I have set up. Heya will then go ahead and publish my campaign for me and it will give me a smart URL to my campaign. And basically this is the URL I want to use whenever I promote it. Uh, like you said, Wes, whether it's organic posts on my website, whether I use a, uh, a Facebook ad or some other paid advertising, I always want to drive to this smart URL because it knows what platform I'm on and it's going to take me to the right experience for me. So I'm sitting here on my little MacBook uh, laptop. It knows I'm on a computer. It's going to take me right to the campaign on Facebook because I had chosen to, to publish to Facebook. Um, if I'm on mobile, it's going to take me to the mobile experience. So voila, there you go, folks. There's your demo. It's actually really simple to put one of these together. Um, I highly recommend uh, you give it a shot. Um, and, and by the way, folks, if you've got uh, any other questions as I'm going, please, please feel free to go ahead and pop them into the GoToWebinar questions panel. Um, I'd be glad to pick those up as I go. All right, cool. So, um,
One last thing I wanted to cover, can social, and this is a very common question we get, can social contests help me get free traffic and leads with no ad spend? Wes, you just posed this great question. There's one other thing I would say, and I kind of touched on it already as far as like promoting this organically to your own audience first. Um, and I highly recommend doing that just based on virality alone. So here's an example, one more quick case study. So this is Marie Scholl. And Marie's the owner at Inspired Endurance. They make these really cool little like running themed jewelry, mostly targeted to women um, who like to run, but they're really cool. You can see these little charms she gave away with this campaign, which was very successful, right? 620 impressions, 345 of those folks actually entered their email address. But here's why um, that's really, here's why it's really important to um, promote organically and make sure that your campaign is really easy to share. So here's the principle, right? So let's say this is Paul. And Paul enters your contest and shares and tweets about it to all of his followers. Okay. Let's say he's got, I think, I think the average number of followers is in the hundreds right now. Okay. So let's say, let's say Paul's got, you know, 250 friends on Facebook. Um, and Twitter. And let's say that just five of them decide they want to enter the contest as well. So then they enter the contest and then they share it with their audience. And each of them has, you know, a couple, you know, 250 fans or followers. And each of them gets five, fr uh, five friends to enter. So you guys can see what I'm getting at here, right? Is there is always the possibility of getting some virality to your campaign, especially the more targeted you are with how you promote it. Um, and that is incredibly powerful when it happens. And you can get some great additional reach from your campaign just by getting to the friends of your fans or the friends of the friends of your fans. So here's a here's just a quick, um, check this out. These are the tweets that went out from those who entered Marie's campaign. They were really excited about the prize. They entered, they clicked share. Pretty great social proof, pretty powerful stuff. So this, this stuff really does work. You can really get some great reach um, by, by leveraging this strategy, by leveraging this strategy. All right, cool. Um, one last question, guys. A lot of people say, well, you know what? What if my industry is kind of a weird one? Will these kinds of uh, contests work? We've seen them work across all, all different types of strategies. Uh, here's Bird's Foot Golf Club, ran a very successful campaign. Nitpick sells yarn. They ran a very successful campaign. Uh, we have a case study I'm putting together right now. An optometry office in Troy, Alabama, ran a social contest um, for their fans and their patients. And they leveraged email, and they leveraged social, and it was very successful for them. They got a lot of new email addresses that they were really, really excited about. So this is a very, very successful um, uh, strategy for a lot of different people. All right, cool. So uh, with that, Wes, before I keep going, uh, any other questions you think uh, uh, would be important for your audience before we uh, kind of round out the content here? Is it possible to do too many contests? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, so you're just doing back to back or one a month, or what do you, you see? know what we what we see generally is that our most successful customers um, have them going on a what I'll say is a regular basis, and regular could mean um, once a month. Regular could mean, um, you know, kind of seasonally. So with every major holiday, they run a they run a contest, um, or you know, it's you know seasonally. Like if they've got a really, if you know, let's say they've got a, a seasonal business that does really well in the spring and summer, they kind of run a lot of contests during the spring and summer. Um, so those that do it successfully uh, run them regularly. I mean, uh, we, we do have some customers that are kind of running a giveaway all the time. They've just made it part of how they do business. But for the most part, folks like to run one for like a week. Let's say give it at least a week or two off, kind of let their audience breathe a little bit and then run another one. Um, I would say on average, we're seeing folks generally run them about once a month. And also depends on what type of campaign you run, right? We've talked about a, a number of different types of campaigns you can run today. Um, a giveaway, a sweepstakes, a photo contest, um, a refer a friend. Uh, there's a group deal, um, a template we've got that a lot of people really like. So if you mix it up, it's kind of like sending email, Wes. You know, if you send the same format newsletter um, every time, um, over time, your list gets used to seeing that format. But if you kind of change it up a little bit and do something a little different, it's it's easier to re-engage them. Okay. Okay, cool. So here's where we are so far, folks. We've talked about how 
a marketing manager, Amy, with no technical skills, was able to launch a campaign that converted at 30%. We went through the six crucial pieces that every social contest needs to succeed. And we shared a, a, several case studies, more than five actually, that captured over 7,000 new email leads. And we're, I'm, I'm going to make sure I save some time for Q&A here at the end as well. But first, I want to know from you guys, have you learned at least two new things today on this webinar? If so, please let me know in the GoToWebinar questions. Just comment yes or no if you've learned at least two new things. Uh, Ted says yes. Wes, it sounds like you've learned maybe a couple of new things. You said you were going to be taking notes. Do you feel like you've learned a couple I of am. new things today on the webinar? I'm in. Awesome. Awesome. Ted says yes. Netra says yes. Great. Cool. So um, I tell you what, Wes, um, with your permission... Um, I would love to, and with the audience's permission as well, um, you know, I would love to share Heyo pricing with your audience. And in fact, um, I know you don't know the specifics of it, but I've actually put together um, a, a little offer for those that have joined the webinar today. You know, you're a good friend, uh, and I've learned a lot from you um, and from listening to your podcast. And uh, I wanted to do something special, so I put together a little offer just for the the uh, Sales Whispers followers for his audience. So would it be cool if I shared that with uh, with everyone if they'd like? Sure. Awesome. So folks, if you're interested in, in hearing about Heyo pricing, please comment by in the GoToWebinar questions panel, B-U-Y in the GoToWebinar questions panel. I'd be glad to share that with you. Just kind of go over it real quick um, and, and uh, share with you a little special offer I put together. And I will tell you, Wes, actually, this is a, a completely unique offer that I put together literally just for you guys. I have never shared this before. So I'm kind of excited to see what people think of it. So here's what's included in every um, Heyo package. You can launch up to three campaigns at a time. You've got access to those photo and video contest templates that I shared. You've got access to giveaway and sweepstakes templates. And that's, you know, the, the majority of our case studies we reviewed today are this type of contest, right? We've got great lead generation templates as well that you can use to give away a free download or another piece of content. You've got direct email marketing integrations. You guys saw that with, with folks like MailChimp and Infusionsoft, Entreport, and others. And mobile version of your campaign to capture mobile leads. That is really important. As we said, more than half of all traffic online comes from phones in 2016. I will also say, hopefully you guys got a feel for this, but Heyo is designed for beginners. It's really simple to use. Uh, you do not uh, need to know how to code. It's, uh, it's really a really nice tool. And uh, it's a totally approved application that integrates directly with Facebook, and we make sure that we um, are in line with all of Facebook's promotion guidelines. We also have great and super responsive customer support. So this is what anyone gets with Heyo when you sign up for a Heyo plan. But what I put together for you guys was, if you're interested in buying today on the webinar, the following bonuses. This is what you'll get, and these are not available anywhere else. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take that limit of three campaigns, and we're just going to blow it through the roof. So you can run as many campaigns as you want. So there's absolutely no limit to the number of campaigns you can run for you guys. Um, I've put together a live training. Wes, one of the things we've seen help customers be really successful is if we can share some best practices with them, kind of like what we shared on the, the webinar today, but we get to go in deeper and, and more specific to their needs. So I've put together a live training I'm going to run next week just for anybody who, who buys from your audience to help make sure that they are successful with Heyo. We love to provide help. Um, I think it's really important. I've put together a PDF guide. Um, of picking the right prize. That's one of the biggest questions we get, Wes, is what should I give away, right? If I want to, if I want to run one of these campaigns, what's, what's the right incentive for me? So we put together a little guide for that that includes 11 high converting ideas that you can just copy. Call it a best practice and leverage them. Uh, it's very simple to do. We have a great invite-only mastermind group on Facebook. Uh, that is really popular, and uh, this is the only way to get access to it. We don't we don't always offer this up. We sometimes do, but Wes, uh, we we were totally uh, we know you're a really smart guy, and your audience is really smart as well, and we think they would really benefit from that. Um, I've also got a free 30 minute video course I'm giving away called How to Discover Content the Newsfeed Loves. Facebook reach is still a hot topic. We get that question a lot from folks. How do I increase my Facebook reach? So. We put together this video training, and this is a really nice video. It's professionally produced, um, and uh, we've gotten a lot of good feedback on it. And finally, and this is kind of the big one, Wes, I'm most excited about. 
um, we will feature anyone who buys, we will feature their business in a blog post on the Heyo blog and kind of to dimension, uh, you know, what that means. Uh, the Heyo blog has about 50,000 unique readers every month. And we've got an, uh, you know, a, a really strong following. Thousands of people are subscribed to the blog via email and they get an email every time a new post is written. So we are really excited to offer this. Basically, we would love to feature as a case study um, anyone who buys today um, and runs a campaign. We would love to profile you as a customer and, uh, and do a write up about you on our blog. So, uh, so I thought uh, that would be a really nice uh, bonus to offer. So here's what that looks like. On the left side is everything we talked about that comes normally with a Heyo plan. On the right side, these are the Wes special bonuses. And the, and the, the cost of this is just 30 bucks a month. It's just $30 a month to use Heyo. And if you guys are interested in this, just grab it at heyo.com forward slash Wes. Heyo.com forward slash W-E-S. So did I do okay here, Wes? What do you think, man? You think this is uh, this might be valuable for, for those in your audience? Yeah, it's fantastic. Awesome. You know, there, there are a lot of tools out there, and I've dabbled with, uh, with several of them, but it's time to stop dabbling. There you go. <laughs> I've got a, uh, I've got a little saying, Wes, dominate, don't dabble, dominate, yeah, don't you dabble. Go. You know, it's so, it's so easy to get, uh, so easy to get, um, kind of distracted trying to do a lot of different things. Uh, and, and like, you know, well, let me, let me try, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of SEO and maybe I'll test a little PPC if Facebook ads is going to be Facebook ads. And let me, let me get some landing pages live. Let me do, um, and I'm a big fan of like, pick a strategy, you know, smart marketers test, right? Pick a strategy, dive in and try it. You know, first of all, try right. something. If you, if you just try something, you're, you're probably already in the, you know, way ahead of the curve, right? I think you can apply the 80, 80, 20 rule there and say on average, 80% of people are going to think about things, but probably never get around to trying it because they think they're too busy or they, they don't, they don't think they know enough. So if you can just test something, you're already ahead of the curve, um, I think. So, uh, so yeah, smart marketers test, uh, try something, try you know, stick with it, uh, work on it, try to optimize it a little bit. Uh, but I find that that's a great, great way to be successful. Great way to be successful. All right, cool. So, uh, so with that folks, we are, I'm just going to leave this slide up. If you want to grab that offer, that's great. Uh, if not, I hope you guys got at least a lot of value out of this content, but I'd love to take any questions that anybody has you included Wes. So if you guys have questions, uh, out there, uh, please feel free to just drop them into um, the GoToWebinar questions panel. And, uh, and, and if you've already asked them, um, I'd go ahead and pop them in again, uh, just, in case, um, just in case we missed them the first time. And I see one question here that Jim asked, Wes. He says, are there any case studies you have on fundraising for not-for-profit organizations? We, have, we do have actually quite a few nonprofits that use Heyo. Um, to run these types of campaigns and are, and are very often very successful in doing it. Um, as far as fundraising goes, here's how I like to think about this strategy, right? So if you, th if you think of social media a little bit like its own sales funnel, at the top of that funnel um, is engagement, right? First of all, just getting people to either follow you or like you or connect with you depending on the platform, right? Um, and then the next step down the funnel is... Um, is getting them to opt in and kind of deepen the relationship with you. And that's what we think, that's where we think of Heyo as fitting in particularly well. Getting them to opt in and provide you contact information. So they become not just a fan or a follower, but actually a lead. Somebody who says, yeah, I'm interested in uh, in whatever it is you have to offer. Um, so then taking that taking that contact information, nurturing that lead, and then eventually getting them to either buy from you. Uh, to do business with you in some way. In, in Jim's case, it sounds like maybe they're doing some fundraising. Um, but that's how I think about the funnel on social. So um, I'd be really clear about your goals with Heyo. The goal, generally speaking, is to build that email list, get more leads. That's just generally where we see our customers have the most success. So Wes, how about you? Any, que any other questions that you've got um, about running this type of campaign? No, I think that was an important point you just brought up there. People need to remember that this is really just going to generate leads, right? You still need some type of system to plug them into, some way to follow up. Absolutely. Uh, and make another offer uh, because this is it's going to cost you money, 
right? You got to pay for the platform, you got to spend the time and create it, and you're going to give away something. Um, so the rest of those names, make sure you have a sequence, something in place to drip on those people to convert them into paying customers. Yeah, I like that a lot, Wes. And what I'll tell you is uh, the customers that we see do the best job, uh, or, or I should say who make the most sales after running these types of campaigns, meaning off of these leads, right? Like monet monetize these leads best are those that uh, leverage email marketing almost immediately. And the two mm -hmm. emails that we see that are particularly um, effective are, first of all, just a simple autoresponder that's set up so that as soon as somebody enters that contest, as soon as somebody you know, opts into the campaign, they get an email that just says, hey, Wes, thanks for entering. We're going to draw the winner on this date. Um, you know, so stay tuned for further, you know, stay tuned. We'll announce the winner via email in the meantime. And then, you know, and then gives them like an, op an option to just engage somehow. You don't want to be overly promotional with this email, I think. But the best practice here is just give them something to engage with. In the meantime, um, here's a blog post we recently published we think you might enjoy, right? Give, give them a little piece of content, something to just get to know you and your brand a little bit better. That's the first email. The second email is a wrap-up email after the contest is over. That's kind of like the consolation prize, right? Hey, Wes, um, our, our spring giveaway is complete. Thanks so much for entering. We've announced the winner on our Facebook page. Unfortunately, this time you didn't win, but... We wanted to thank you uh, for entering. So here's a coupon code for 20% off that same product from our own online store. Or here's an invitation to a webinar I'm running uh, this weekend to help you understand how to run um, successful Facebook ad campaigns or something like that, right? Um, right. That, that follow-up email, I, I, I'm going to come back to a comment you made earlier where you, you're always dropping your business card in the fishbowl, but you never hear what happens, right? One of the cool things about social media and, and, and doing these kinds of campaigns digitally in general is it's really, really easy to give that social proof and, and just kind of hold your hand, hold it up and say, yeah, this was a real campaign. Here's the person who won, you know, here, he or she is uh, smiling, holding the prize. Right. Um, and then here am I saying, Hey, thanks for entering. We really appreciate it. And by the way, here's an invitation to engage with us even further. Um, those two emails um, are a great at a minimum are a great way to just, nurture that relationship. Because the other thing you don't want to do is run a campaign like these successful case studies, get 100 or 200 or 500 new email addresses, and then not do anything with them for a month or six months, right? Um, finding a way to en engage with them in a smart way early on is a, is a really, really smart thing to do. Uh, now, do you, do you get into that um, in any of the I mean, when they're logged into the software or are there like best practices y'all share in the private group or what? Yeah. So we do share some of those best practices. Uh, we also have some great um, like e like uh, PDF guides and educational resources we've put together. Uh, we even have those two emails I just spelled out. We've got one, one uh, guy that has um, like suggested copy for those emails. Um, right. but in terms of actually executing those emails, like we, we're not an email marketing platform. We generally rely on our partners, our integration partners to do that. And there, you know, we've got, as you saw, many great integration partners that would be a great choice, um, to use to like, to actually execute on some of those marketing, uh, some of, some of that email marketing. Right. Cool. Well, I don't see any other questions, I think, from the audience, Wes. Uh, any other final questions you think that would be uh, good for me to answer for them? No, I think you covered it. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So, uh, so Wes, as we kind of start to wrap up, how did you feel about the content today? It sounds like uh, it's got the wheels turning a little bit for you, huh? Yeah, it's good. Awesome. Um, I, I honestly, I haven't run a contest in probably a year. So Okay. Uh, we got to talk. All right. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. That's great. Well, folks, I just want to, we're, we're four minutes past the top of the hour. I just want to thank you guys all uh, for joining us today. Um, and I want to, again, Wes, thank you for, for putting this together and inviting me to present. I really enjoyed it. Um, really enjoyed putting this stuff together. And I have to say, Wes, um, I, I have been really enjoying listening to the sales podcast. You know, I've been listening to it now for a couple of months. Uh, you get you have some great guests on there, and uh, I'm learning a lot from uh, from those interviews. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. 
you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So, uh, so again, folks, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and like I said, I'll be, I'll be sending the recording out, uh, for all of you as well. Uh, for those of you that, um, are interested in grabbing this bonus offer, you still can at heyo.com forward slash Wes. Um, and if you, if you have any questions at all about running a successful contest or our pricing or best practices, uh, feel free to shoot uh, me an email. You can reach us at support at heyo.com, support at H-E-Y-O.com. We'd be glad to help you with any of those questions. So thanks everyone for joining. And Wes, thank you, man. We'll, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks for doing it. You bet. Bye-bye.